Welcome to your daily dose of statistics. I'm Professor Collins, and today we will be discussing uh, setting up a baseline of understanding mathematics and statistics. Um, now this lecture is really important because it really kind of sets the baseline um, for how to proceed with statistics. Um, now statistics is unlike many other areas and many other fields because statistics is uh, it builds on itself. So statistics is necessarily cumulative. And what that means is before progressing through each step of this class, it's necessary for you to understand the previous steps. So if you don't understand the previous steps, it's absolutely essential to learn those and to talk with your peers, um, watch videos, talk with me about those problems that you're having um, so that we can catch you up and make sure that you're on the same page with everybody else. Um, because if you get behind in statistics, it's really, really difficult to catch up because like I said, everything builds on each other. Now, what I'm gonna do in this video is, um, like I said, I'm gonna take you through uh, a basic of understand, basics of understanding uh, mathematics and statistics. Um, so this video is gonna be fairly short um, the rest of the videos are going to be a little bit longer. They're going to be about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and so what I want to do right now is take a, a few seconds and discuss the, um, the analogy of the mountain for statistics, right? And like I said, statistics is <clears throat> necessarily cumulative. And so what we need to do is we need to start at the base. We need to set up a base. And then what we can do is after we have all our gear, after we have all of our baseline knowledge, then we can start climbing the mountain, right? And so what we'll do is we'll start at the beginning by setting up a base. Then we'll go to the, the base of the mountain, descriptive statistics. Now these are all the statistics that are used to describe your data, right? These are um, charts, graphs, um, means, uh, standard deviation, so on and so forth. Then we'll go up to inferential statistics. Now what inferential statistics, the purpose of inferential statistics are is to infer your results to a larger population or to generalize your results to a larger po population. Then after we get that down, we'll climb up a little bit higher to bivariate statistics. Now bivariate statistics are understanding the relationship between two variables, right? So we think of correlation in this sense. Um, a correlation is the relationship between two variables, right? Height and weight, for example, um, is bivariate statistics. Multivariate statistics, on the other hand, um, introduce more than two variables, right? So they're multivariate instead of bivariate by meaning two, multi obviously meaning multi. Now, multivariate statistics, we'll be getting into statistics where we have um, two or more uh, independent variables and one dependent variable. Um, so when we get to this height of the mountain, you should have mastered all of the statistics below, bivariate statistics, inferential statistics, and descriptive statistics. So what we're going to do is we're going to start in this lecture by setting up a base. And so as you can see here, <coughs> I set up our, a little tent, so this is our our base, um, our home base for for everything. Um, and so we need to really get this stuff down before moving on to the extra pieces. So this lecture is about um, a review of basic math and statistics, right? And so we'll spend a couple minutes on this, and then um, get this down and move on to the other pieces of this le uh, of the lectures. So the learning goals for this is um, understanding how to use calculators and stats programs, understanding what variables and symbols are, and just a quick re review of the order of operations. So in this class, um, calculators and, and for stats generally, um, calculators and stats programs um, are absolutely essential. Um, if you can imagine this uh, 20, 30 years ago or, or a little bit beyond that, um, people actually did their dissertations with really complex statistics and did them by hand. Um, so things that
people were doing that took them literally months to calculate now it takes a click of a button um, so I applaud those people who had the patience to do all of those stats calculations by hand um, and the nice thing is we have packages like SPSS which is the statistical package for the social sciences which we'll be using in this course um, and SPSS uh, you you click your button and it runs your analysis and if something's wrong then you just fix it and you run it again you don't have to recalculate everything um, by hand so we'll be doing both hand calculations um, in this class but because statisticians use stats packages like SPSS we'll be using stats uh, SPSS a lot in this class um, and again with the calculators calculators are, are necessary and um, easy to use for things like calculating a, a mean um, uh, calculating oftentimes a standard deviation and phones actually have strong enough calculators for some of the basic calculations we'll be doing in this class. So let's take a second to talk about <coughs> variables and symbols. A variable is a trait that can change um, from person to person or over time, right? So it's called a variable because it varies across people or it varies over time. And some very basic demographic variables are things like height, weight, age, education, so on and so forth. Um, ethnicity, for example, right? Um, so if we think about height, for example, people grow over time. Um, people are different heights, right? I'm a different height than what you probably are. You may be taller or shorter than I am. Um, we probably weigh something different, right? So these things, these are traits, these are characteristics in individuals that can change from person to person. I should, I should clarify, cases, let me go back here, I should, I should clarify here, a variable is a trait that can change in a case, right? So it's not necessarily a person, um, it can be two different cities, right? Populations of two different cities, for example. So it's important, and we'll get into this later in the course, to clarify what we call your level of analysis. Right? Are we analyzing variables at the individual level? Are we analyzing variables at, say, the neighborhood level? Are we analyzing variables at, say, the school level, for example? Right? So, but the variable idea stays the same across these levels of analysis. Um, so there's variables at school levels, right? Again, number of students, for example, um, or maybe demographics of the school. Um, and so each of these things is a variable that we need to attend to. And so everything in statistics is variable based, right? So we have to keep this in mind that we're analyzing variables. Symbols are often used and are, are absolutely used in statistics. So I'm just going to run through these real, qu real quick. So if we use the big letter X <clears throat> X is used to identify a variable in a set of scores, right? So if we're talking about height, for example, um, X is going to be used to represent that variable of height. X sub score 1, um, or X sub 1, identifies a specific case for the variable, right? So if, again, if we're looking at height, um, X sub 1 is the first case's height, right? Or the first person in the set of scores' height. Right, x sub 3 would be the third person's height. Um, and, and these symbols and the, this, it's called notation, is going to be used a lot in this course um, and it can get very confusing for students. Um, and it took me a long time to, to figure this stuff out because it can become very confusing. So if any of these small little things like a symbol or a notation or a sub i or a sub 1 becomes confusing, please let me know immediately so we can address that so that everybody is on the same page. Um, if we have more than one variable, right, in a multivariate case, we'll use additional symbols. Um, and it usually starts at x and goes up to z. So x, w, y, z, so on and so forth. Um, and then when we use letters, when we use sub letters, right, so in this last case, x sub i identifies a specific group, right? So again, we're, it, for example, if we're talking about um, girls scores on variable x, right? So if we're talking about girls height on variable x. 
Now let's take a moment to talk about order of operations. Um, now this is this is going back to high school days, um, but it's important to know because sometimes these can get mixed up. Um, so first let's just talk about the various operations. We have multiply, divide, square root, and sum. Um, when we're talking about sum, we're using the, um, the Greek letter sigma, or it looks like a big E, and that just simply means to sum. So in this, if in this bottom equation here, what we're saying is we're summing all the, all the scores of x, right? Variable x. Um, score 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 equals 18. Now if we go back to the top, um, there's multiple forms of multiply, right? So we can, we can do a, a, excuse me, a x b, um, a dot b, a ampersand b, um, just a next to b, a in parentheses to b, um, right? So all of these are different forms of multiplication. Um, divide is, is fairly standard, square root um, is, is also fairly standard. Um, and then again, sum. Sum is the big one to note, that anytime you see that Greek letter sigma, that means to sum. Now let's talk about the order of operations. Um, order, order of operations, um, it starts with, so when you have a big set of um, algebra that you need to calculate, um, what you need to do first is square or square root, right? Whichever, whichever you see first. Then it's multiply and divide, then add and subtract. Um, if you do these out of order, you'll get a different answer, right? So it's important to do each of these in order. So remember, you square and square root first, multiply and divide, then add and subtract. So after this lecture, um, you should have learned um, how we will be using calculators and stats programs in class, um, what variables and symbols are the most common in statistics, uh, what are the statistical operations, and what are the order of operations. Right? So again, these things are really important to understand. We are building a baseline here. So without having this baseline, um, it's really going to be difficult to begin climbing this mountain, right? So um, get these down and we'll move forward.